I used to listen to good podcasts when everything was fine, but now I listen to this podcast as I've lost my mind. My gym partner's a podcast. My gym partner's a podcast. Yeah. Bull shark, porcupine, I don't know what. Doing this it's podcast my with a show. Pain in the my show this should be called basic lucy in 1992 i was watching television i was around eight at this time on the tv i saw something a show called <laughs> basic lucy <laughs> has anyone else seen this on this po- <laughs> yep that's Can't right we're doing, again. We're, doing the, we're doing the candle cove bit Dang again <laughs> no matter how much Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of My Gym Partners and Podcast, the podcast where we look at My Gym Partners and Monkey <laughs> real good. No matter how uncomfortable <laughs> it is and how much we w- wish to look away, look away we shan't. It compels you, it it brings us closer to the core of, of television, uh, of say, media. Gotta say... <laughs> These were some pretty uncomfortable episodes. Yeah. <laughs> not, but it's, for a disclaimer, not uncomfortable in the sense that it's just, like, butt joke. I mean, there's there's a couple of those in these episodes. But it's just, they have a weird atmosphere to them. These... The, well, the first one is uncomfortable in the sense that, you know, features massive girl in a dress, guy in a yes, dress massive, joke. massive, absolutely massive. <laughs> Yeah, gotta so, say, so big reason for that. Big like, reason but, that one's not my favorite out of the two. But the latter one, it's just you know, it it just doesn't seem to have a fulfilling arc or anything. It's just it felt it's, like it it's went just by. Weird. It, it went by like I think a flash. Prompting... <laughs> I feel like a good word for these episodes is <laughs> placid. It it feels very like still. Almost like you're on the on the surface of a of a lake on a particularly unwindy like, day. There was some parts where I like genuinely had a, a good <laughs> chuckle or two, but like overall, I don't know. I don't know if it's worth it. <laughs> I, th- I think it speaks to like how unmemorable they are because like one of the like you know. One of these we remembered half of, but didn't remember the other half. And the other one is just like, at least for for me, like that latter episode is just completely drained from my memory banks. I, I rem- remember that at all. I surprisingly remembered quite a bit of these like two episodes. Like, I don't. I, I feel like this was one. Maybe maybe season two was the one that Cartoon Network was, aired this, a bunch. These are all very familiar to I, me. Yeah, like this is where thing where like I guess like the core of the show, like the actual like uh, I guess like tone is set in. I feel like that that's like what I remember the yeah, most. I feel like there is a different vibe to season two. So let's uh, let's get in. Huh? Let's get your feet wet. Yeah. yeah. Let's let's start with <laughs> cheer pressure. Imagine if my gym partner's a monkey. Sorry, before we get into it. My gym partner's a monkey is a liquid. What qualities uh, does that like, liquid have? Kind of some like Biscuit. backwash in there. It's, it's like it's, chunky. It's highly viscous. I don't it's like, like this question. <laughs> oil. Well, we're getting our feet wet. We need to know what we're getting our feet into. <laughs> yeah, never mind. All right. It, it's, it's better we don't. We we start off and uh, we we get a set of some cheerleaders. Uh, we get you know some background animals. We get Ingrid and Lupe, and and they're all yeah, introducing Dickie. themselves through cheers. Dickie's we got Donna back. the dolphin. Sorry, I'm so excited. We got Ingrid. <laughs> Dickie's <laughs> there. Dickie's back. <laughs> <laughs> Dickie's back, y'all. Jake's rival and famed uh, SJW <laughs> takedowner, <laughs> joke funny man, J- Dickie is back. Dickie Sugar Jumper, because we we needed him in the well, second he's, season he's, too, he's I Jake's guess. Rival. Hon- no, honestly, yeah, like honestly, <laughs> I I liked his introduction. 
in in the lunchroom episode because I thought he was a good rival to Jake. Where he like where Jake is like the funny man to Adam and is like stoic and and un un like breakable. Dicky is his funny man. He's the funny man to the funny man that that breaks him, that drives him insane. And, and we see that a little bit in this episode as as Jake's like as as he's seeing this display of all the cheerleaders cheering and whatnot. Uh, he's he's just going <laughs> boo you stink. He's like a real jerk. <laughs> he's like the only he's the only person there. Well, the aside side. from his uh his bud <laughs> yeah. Adam's Adam a his lion back over his head, like really embarrassed. He's like, come on, Jake. Like, what? Can we go? <laughs> like, we come here every week. I, I I'm so tired of it. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to be here. I don't want anybody. To, I thought it was funny the the lines. I don't want anybody to see me <laughs> here. Like, I like is he. I I suppose it's just a his his like masculinity right. talking, right? Yeah, whatever, whatever yeah. that is. He he doesn't want to be seen watching girly things like oh, cheerleading. No, not cheerleading. <laughs> How Jake is like awful. really over critical of Dickie and and uh, Adam says like, "Oh, are you still upset that they didn't they didn't want you on the team, Jake?" And Jake gets defensive about it. He's like, "No, no, I'm not upset. Don't, no, I'm not. I'm fine. They're just bad at it. They're just so bad. I just have to comment on how bad they are." Um, Dickie's announces to the two of them, I guess. Oh, come. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're the only the other to two the, people there, and the whole and crowd, and Principal yeah. Pixie Frog who He's hops like, in. Oh, we're go- but, if you like that, then come see us at the Extreme State Cheerleading Finals. Woo! Principal oh, Pixie whoa, Frog whoopee! comes in and he's like, "I've heard it's great, but I'm always out of town when it happens." And then he presses his hands together, <laughs> looks to the looks to the he sky, prays. and says, "Like, thank you." <laughs> To God? <laughs> Question mark. Thank you, Lord. I oh. whatever God Principal Pixie Frog prays to, that's the religion <laughs> I want to choose. Uh, I'm tired of being godless. <laughs> I want. I want. Uh, I f- I found a. I found someone who's going to send me on my way into heaven. Principal Pixie Frog, you done got <laughs> me you. religious. No problem. Um, so, so they they kind of just Principal Pixie Frog just is kind of there to say that and then leaves, and then there Dickie's like, but just wait till we give this demonstration, and, and they they just do the tower. Can and... you do that accent again? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't think that I, was Dickie Sugar. I think, Jump. Was I think that was somebody else. <laughs> Listen, I can't. Like, they they tried to do the tower, and and Jake <laughs> like expositing how it's it's the hardest cheer move to ever pull off. If you don't have your pelvis pointed in a ninety one point seven degree angle, yeah. then you're toast. It just it all all come crumbling down. It's like the ghost move from that Simpsons <laughs> right. skating and, game. And Jake's like kind of like reenacting like what would happen and like with his hands, just talking to himself. And Adam just kind of scoots away as he's <laughs> he like he like pauses and like just kind of like silently scoots a little farther away from Jake. Like what the fuck? One thing I kind of appreciate about like these two episodes is like the different sort of like <laughs> mood we get to see Adam in because usually we get, we get to see Adam in like frantic survival mode but like or he seems mode. or anger mode but in these he's yeah, mostly I, I, chill I made a note of that later he just seems like he's like you know what I've been at this for a season already I'm just gonna take it as it comes he's like seems to like be more sarcastic and like fight back at jake when he says stupid shit like way more often which 
Which I think that's better. That's that's giving me some like I mean not, you know, not perfection like like it, this. It's but... it's a character development <laughs> of it's, some variety. It's and... like it, it it's giving me season one SpongeBob vibes. Like the like uh or season one through three, you know, like Patrick and SpongeBob's oh, yeah, dynamic well, SpongeBob in that. Just it's... nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's like they they kind of are like, I guess you know, like bouncing yeah, off it's, one it's, another. It's fun. Um, Dicky like... gets on top of the tower and he like is talking to himself. He's like, "Now to just put myself in the." this degree fucking angle and then he's <laughs> he falls give a take a few degrees <laughs> there we are <laughs> he just kind of he falls off and he, nobody catches him and he's like like ingrid's part of this so he's up there <laughs> and like it's just, you just hear ah! <laughs> for like a really long time <laughs> And then he hits the ground, but very softly, because he's a small rodent creature. He's a sugar jumper. Yeah, and he's just lying on the ground, a mangled a little mess, his, his leg twisted. He's like, I think I'm gonna be <laughs> alright. I've seen my leg bend that and way. Then oh, my... Nurse Gazelle. And then he gets <laughs> scraped off the pavement. <laughs> By Nurse Gazelle with a, like, a big like uh, snow shovel looking scraper. And he just screams, ah, 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 ah. Yeah, so they're... Tom Kenny, like, all the times that they're talking to each other, it's just Tom Kenny talking <laughs> to himself. I just think that's funny. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, Dickie's, Dickie's dying. dying. Um, and the cheerleaders are, are kind of like, but like, oh, I hope, oh man, I hope you get better soon, Dickie. And then they kind of just like, great, now what do we do? We, we need a boy on our team. Yeah, yeah, for some reason, like, in this, there's a regulation that they need uh, uh, one boy to equal out all the other girls on a cheerleading squad. And Lupe says, oh, it's some sort of, like, stupid equality thing or something. It's, like, equal rights or whatever. <laughs> yeah, why, why, why did she I'm say it like that? It's, stupid it's Ben's stupid rights. <laughs> It's a really stupid thing. I don't. It doesn't like. It doesn't quite offend. It just doesn't mean anything. So so uh, Adam's just a asking like you know why don't they have Jake there and and like he's confused. It's like is it because he's bad and uh, Dolphin's like no he, he he's just, like actually one of the greatest cheerleaders in the state. He's just ugly. They just say yeah. he's just ugly. In no uncertain terms, so and it's kind of shocking it's so that mean. they're addressing it. Like, well, it's so funny that we're finally that, just saying it now that Jake say, is like, just ugly. I guess you got me there. <laughs> like... Yeah. <laughs> well, I, mean, I guess really you're ugly, right. You'd have to I find can't... someone who looks, who'd be, you know, small enough to toss and cute enough in this sweater, and he holds the sweater up to himself and makes it like a. Ah! <laughs> a, a little uh, cute face, and they're all like, mm, 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 and then they just yeah. you know go after him. They, have, just, you know, they, because you know uh, they can just like kidnap him and like make him like a, a yeah, cheerleader we're at involuntarily. The, we're at the finals suddenly, you know? and <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're they're just at the finals. What what'd you think of that, Lucy? It's because, a bad transition. Like, I, I, I think. I think it would have made a much funnier a... episode if instead of doing what they ended up doing, it was like Adam, like, I don't know, basically training with the cheerleading squad and then like finding that he's actually really good at it. And then Jake's getting like increasingly more jealous because now it's personal. Now it's his best friend who's who's like against him. Yeah, that I mean, yeah, that sounds like more like an episode <laughs> than this one did. Like it's. It just cuts to the the state finals. The, the cheerleaders are doing their bit again. They're introducing themselves. Adam just kind of goes like half ass. Adam. Adam. They have to shackle to one of the cheerleaders. I think like the the hippo, right? The, the Tanya. Yeah, yeah. They have, he's shackled to Latanya. <laughs> like, and it's 
and they just start like throwing him around like, and like <laughs> bouncing him off the like backboard of the basketball hoop and while they're doing their routine. The, the announcer says something funny in regards to this. Man, they're they're really using their boy cheerleader <laughs> effectively here. Yeah, like I, I think it was just like they're really taking advantage of their boy cheerleader or something, which why? <laughs> And then Carrie's there, because apparently Carrie's a cheerleader from her own school. And what is... Yeah, Chester here's where I Arthur noticed Middle that, school. like, Adam sees her, and he doesn't go, K -k 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 Carrie! He, like, just is like, oh, hi, Carrie. Yeah. I was like... Yeah, and I was he like, just Whoa, talks to her. When did... When did that happen? Like, he's not like, oh, I'm so em em embarrassed that you're seeing me in the cheerleader. He's just like... He's, she's like, oh, I didn't know you liked cheerleading. And he's like, eh, I'm kind of new to it. Like, like, I'm, like, I'm even shocked that, what? like, he's not even, like, doing a thing of, like, wow, you, you like guy cheerleaders? Well, I'm, uh, I'm, you know, I'm the best guy cheerleader there ever. He's not even doing that. He's just, he's just resigned <laughs> to this whole thing. He's even, he's even, like, honest. He's just like, yeah, I don't, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I wish yeah. I wasn't doing it, but. Here's where we need to talk here. about the difficult yeah. part. So okay, so. I'm going to put yep. this very delicately, and massive warning for, like, borderline to just transphobia, basically, where there's a character that comes in who's on Carrie's team. Her name is Jackie. Her shape is very similar to that of Jake's spider monkey, except instead of having, you know, like, the orange fur on her very long arms... It's, like, obviously shaved. She has his disgusting teeth. <laughs> and... <laughs> yeah. It's... Just imagine a human shaped like Jake right. Spider and Monkey. There you go. And... and... She's, got, she's got, like, ponytails. And... But I, I don't know. Is she a human? Yes. Well, <laughs> that can only... Yeah, I mean... They they don't tell us that she's not a human. Yeah, that, like that's the thing. Like they they just say like Carrie just says like oh yeah she's the like a new transfer student and I'm wondering if she has like a similar situation with Adam except the reverse or if it's just you know she's just a human like they they never really yeah, like, explain she's it too much. Like, is basically just... Jake Spider Monkey shaped in every single way. It, like no human should look like. That. She... <laughs> she right, doesn't yeah. have a tail. And Adam immediately looks at her and is like, oh, that's not a girl. That's Jake dressed up like a girl. And they keep just, he just keeps saying that and trying to convince the people on the cheer, his squad, like, oh, it's just Jake. That's why they're in, like, Carrie's team starts doing, like, the tower. And he's, and he's like, oh, that's why they know our moves because it's Jake. And they're like, Adam, you stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> why, why are you really? just insulting this random girl? Why are you insulting her dental hygiene? Why are you saying this girl looks like Jake? Lupe that's like the that's really weird. Where where it's just she doesn't look half as ugly as Jake, and it's like, is that supposed to be a compliment? What? You, like I I guess you're just stating that as a fact, but like it's it's, it's just so it's weird. <laughs> it's it's just. <laughs> it's just nothing. It's <laughs> that, that's that's the whole basis of the, of this episode. And forgive us for for uh, beleaguering the the point of it. But we gotta t like uh, they do their bit, and then Adam accidentally like well not accidentally he just like tries to call Jackie. Uh, Jake out. Uh, Jacqueline, Jackie tries to call Jackie out. And it's like you, you, you're. Come on, take wig. off that wig. <laughs> and she just says, <laughs> "Wig." Um, <gasps> yeah. So he basically unintentionally challenges her to like a cheerleading off or like a dance off. Basically, um, they start dancing. It. Adam's like, "Oh, I, I can't really dance," but then he just feels the music in his soul, and he. And he does a little thing where he's like, my body's moving. Like, and I'm pretty sure this was the part of the 
episode that they used for commercials. Yeah. Like poetry. And it feels so good. I don't like the way he said all of that. There's something about the flow of it that made me feel oh, uncomfortable. Even... <laughs> this whole episode is uncomfortable uh, in that way. Carrie is <laughs> like, wow, you're so good at dancing, Adam, and Adam. Like, like the way Adam wins is like, you know, he's he's dancing, Jack, Jackie's dancing, and but he kind of just knocks her away like by spinning and he then, does like, like a <laughs> spin move <laughs> and and then and gets knocked over <laughs> and, and 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 for some reason yeah, that he means he won her. he won the dance off yeah it's like whoa you did it you danced you danced better than her good job you just fucking go up to the other person just like <laughs> yeah, punch them in the face the worst part is he goes all right jake like the the jig is up and he like gets on top of the of Jackie and like starts pulling at her hair and he's like take the wig off and she's like ah <laughs> ah and you know I'm we're going to give you a moment here you know to just guess like what happens next you know you'll never guess what happens next but you know it's not just, super just, obvious just in case not you want you want that at all what's going to happen next did Jake you guess he walks right in probably yeah, Jake. Jake shows right up, and you're just uh, like, oh, uh, oh, oh, I get it. Whoa, oh, whoa! <laughs> I can't believe this so... twist. Like, okay, this so... joke is obviously a bad, poor taste joke, but even here, it's just so like extended it's it's supposed to be like the point of the episode i guess the crux the main conflict but it's it's so dragged out and it's why, just, why didn't it's just, if they wanted to do the whole jake versus adam at the cheerleading meet why didn't they have jake transfer transfer schools to be the boy cheerleader at carrie's school that way it was boy cheerleader versus boy cheerleader and it could have been that they they did they didn't have to do this weird like mix up sort of thing like it it it's like they didn't want to write jake <laughs> this like, episode let's, let's put him at the very beginning at the very end that's it it's, yeah i i just don't like maybe it's because the next episode kind of has Jake being a little angry. And but... I I think it is, like, a common, like, thread with, like, Jake. Like, you know, he's usually jealous, and, like, that's, like, a u usual plot point, so maybe they didn't want to do that this episode. But, but they also felt like they had to include Jake because, you know, gender non-conforming, he likes, you know, likes the girly Here's stuff, but can't admit to it. To, to, to save so this they... episode. I would, like, rewrite all of this. It would If you wanted a cheerleader episode with Jake and Adam, um, it would be... Car Adam's motivation would be Carrie. It would be like, oh, he wants to join the team because, I don't know, maybe he's, like, at the bus stop and Carrie mentions she's gonna be at the finals meet. And he's like, oh, well, I want to I wanna see that. And she's like, mentions offhandedly that, like, she likes boy cheerleaders or something. I don't know. Have that be his motivation. Have Jake also be competing to be on the team. And I don't know. Something something with that. That could work. This this was just weird. God. I, I, I get the sense that they wanted to divert expectations by, like, that, you know, the thing with, like, Adam not immediately fawning over Carrie in this episode and stuff. And, like, him just, like, being blasé rather than, like, like, super furious or whatever all the time but it's it's it just feels like a nothing episode it's just uncomfortable uh only saving grace at the end is that uh <laughs> jackie adams gives a half-assed apology <laughs> thing, right and then she she just rockets him just like flings him so long gay bowser style out just, of the fucking window and into just, orbit. 
Just fucking plus ultras that motherfucker into space. He's <laughs> like, I don't think he's coming back. <laughs> And then Jake's like, "Oh well, you have a spot open, right? Uh, let me on." And they all run away from him. And he's like, "What? Well, I've been, I've been using a new like lotion. It's great for my complexion." So Jake knows he's ugly. <laughs> Which that makes me so sad because you know, like, like he's always like, if you know. That's that's very poetic, I think, honestly. Like, all these other episodes, we see him so confident in his image, in his, like, <laughs> smelly butt, and, like, everything about himself. And, like, he's, he's, like, just so confident. And, like, for a while, like, you get the assumption that, uh, maybe them just being, like, unhygienic is just, like, an animal thing, and it's not really frowned upon. It's not even really seen as ugly. But, like, according to this episode, no. <laughs> they all think he's ugly. <laughs> Genuinely, uh, they think he's, like, even for animal standards, he's just disgusting. He's just slovenly, but... It's, bec it's because he lives in the between zone <laughs> of human and animal. He's a ah. monkey, you see. A chimpanzee or a, or a spider monkey or... What it, he's not a chimpanzee. Spider monkeys are different, but um, but he 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 lives in a twilight zone of of what of what's human and what's animal, and the line between like what's I guess like presentable is blurred and skewed. So and he, honestly, like you know, he's he's a hero for like coming above like all that like you know hate on his like appearance like you know people would say like you know why why are you so body confident in yourself you look ugly jake you you're awful but he he, he just carries on he, he acts like he's the hottest shit and you know what we can learn a thing from jake we can i i think when i keep seeing within Jake's character, like, mm -hmm. the trans experience. And, like, I don't know how I feel about that. It's, I mean, there, you know, there's some problematic elements there. Really, with, there's like, a lot of things. A lot just, of things. But, you know, you, a whole like, lot this of whole things. episode, this, for one. However you like, um... You can find a positive message. Somebody dealing with the sad, the, the awful, awful right. ways of this world. And you know what else? In their own sad, way. And... <laughs> but, uh, the but, next but, episode. Uh, <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, I'm tired of talking about about that one. Let's get tired of talking about the next one. Uh... Basic Jake. That's what? that's that's what a, a title. title. <laughs> I don't. Is that is, I, is that is that like... There was a weird TV show that came on during the day <laughs> called Basic Jake. Has anyone on this forum it used to come heard on of Saturdays? <laughs> random and it would randomly end sometimes. Anyway, um, it's Jake and Adam walking through the hallway. Jake's carrying a bucket of chum, and then suddenly he's not carrying it anymore. <laughs> And Adam's like, where'd it go? What what are you trying to pull right now? And Jake's like, oh, I don't know. Let's ask Principal Pixie Frog with the ch this, uh, panning to like the chum bucket like over the the door that he's uh, that Principal Pixie Frog's obviously gonna open. We need to talk about how horrifying it must be to be a small, scent, like, sapient frog and have a bucket of dead people, dead fish, falling onto you. Well, that's the thing, is it, isn't it? Like, you know, I think there's some sapient animals and there's some, like, feral animals in this world. So, like, may maybe, like, there's there's a bit of desensitization there. It's like, oh. how could you know, though? Yeah, that's true. Uh, and there was also one of the previous principles, according to, like, 
one of those one of the first episodes was principal <laughs> right. chum bucket I, I just want to talk more about principal pixie frog's odd relationship with his mother apparently <laughs> yes so, so, so jake for some reason like knows principal pixie frog's name and like does an imitation and is like oh punchinelle like that <laughs> What I what is the name? I that couldn't really understand says? it. It was something like, like that. I think it was like Pachinello or something. I, th I think it might have been Pachinello, but like Punchinello, isn't that those like puppets that know. beat each other up? Duh. Ah, you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Who are you talking about? <laughs> uh, yeah, Punchinello, a short, a short, stout, comical-looking person. Oh, I see. Well, maybe that wasn't his first name, and it was just like a a, a kind of like a I guess you know like a nickname, a nickname like a mom nickname. Uh, it might be. Uh, I I just know it's like it's associated with those little like freaky puppets with the big noses that beat each other up that a lot of cartoons like to reference. So maybe you know, maybe that is his name, or maybe that's just what his mother calls him. And like it's appropriate because he's a, he's a yeah, so, weird little so, man. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, you know, uh, Prince <laughs> Frog is like, I told you not to, to. I'm at work. You're never supposed to bother me here. He walks out, gets chummed. Muffer, <laughs> just gets. Do I need to get a restraining order? God, it's just all these questions. All these like this are new like, like, just Whoa. load load of lore for principal pixie frog is just like yeah and something so huh he assigns jake and adam saturday detention adam is so upset he's like i didn't do anything i'm innocent and jake's like excited he's like happy and you know you, he's not principal oh. pixie frog he's not listening to adam because he's like you don't have to say anything i'm just so upset my mother would use students to get to me <laughs> I'm like what is she, what <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like a regular What's going thing. on here? Because um, I don't remember like any, like this is the like this this episode I already like barely remember at all. It's 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 a tiny speck in my mind. But that that fact about Principal Pixie Frog is even a tinier speck that I I don't think I even knew and, that like, he has like <laughs> motherly issues. Yeah, does it get ever get brought up again? We'll I guess out. we'll have to um, see. It's an it's an interesting like major character trait to bring up in the second season so of your TV show. They're they're at detention. Um, it's they're sitting in the lunchroom. Adam comes in and he looks miserable. He's like hair is all messy. Just yeah, so it's very <laughs> off model. But in a funny way. And I remember the lines so early Saturday morning. And that's been in my head for pretty much forever. <laughs> I, I I don't know what it is. I don't okay. remember it's this be episode. Okay. We'll get it together. <laughs> um, you know, I, I was just like praying that this was going to be like a breakfast club scenario. Where like a few other animals would come in and then they'd learn a life lesson and run through the hallways from Principal Pixie Frog, but no, just dingoes. Just dingoes. Dingoes, show up. dingoes <laughs> come. So funny. And, and like, oh, oh, good day, May. What a popping uh, sh shrimp on the barbie uh, sh sh didgeridoo, eh? What? And just you know, random witticisms from and from every time down they do under. That, they do. And just, <laughs> yeah, like one what? of the characters is talking to like pause, <laughs> yeah. and they'll still. What? <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> it's funny because I do this, like, that's a joke <laughs> that I make with my friends in my own <laughs> actual life, and I'm pretty sure I didn't get it for my Jim Parker monkey. <laughs> Like, I, I think I didn't, but also... And Principal Pixie Frog maybe? shows up, and he's like, oh, these oh guys, you know, help me out. Um, and he offers them a treat, and the dingo <laughs> says something. I don't even know what. He's... Oh, it'd be right, right spiff, and you put that on the bobby there. <laughs> or something. What? <laughs> and then he's just like... 
What? And then he says, all right, tree them. <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention one line I, I did want to mention. I don't remember if this happens before they're in detention or while they're in detention. But, like, Adam is, like, so weirded out by Jake's excitement to be in detention. He, like, looks at the camera and he's like, now I see why they eat monkey brains in some countries. And I was like, <gasps> Yeah, yeah, that was before he got... That's a fucked up line. It's, it's just, it's, that's just messed up, and like... Like, I, I guess good Jake didn't hear that. Why, why do you gotta <laughs> say that? I, I understand. You got your Saturday ruined, but like... The, the, no need yeah, to call for so, violence. So violent, but, um, <laughs> they get chased up a tree by the dingoes, like they start barking at them. Um, and as they're up on the tree, you know, Adam's like, well... This is it, uh huh? And Jake's like, "Oh, let me show you, like, why I get detention every Saturday." And he wraps his tail around Adam and takes him. He jumps up into the vent. He just he steals it. God, horrifying imagery right there. Just like imagining being snatched away by, by Jake's, Jake's tail. But and Jake's just taken tail. into the vents, the ventilation system. Never You're to be banging on the wall, yeah. and you only see him faintly in in front of you, just like moving with such a vi- efficiency through these <laughs> dank vents. He's been through taking here you, before, taking you, you so, to some undisclosed location, his lair, so... <laughs> a so place scary. to die. But um, they get to the place they're they're getting to, and it's. Ba 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 bum. It's the old AV room. Uh, there's like he's like, oh, every Saturday I run a low tier cable show, and he like the a, like a neon light called Basic Jake shows up, and they're live. He's like, aren't we I'm, in? I'm... <laughs> this place is familiar. I feel like I've seen it before. Where am I? No, this is the AV room, Jake. You couldn't have taken the AV room. But he has. He knows a guy. <laughs> he knows a guy. That's how he got all the film equipment. You know, that's a thing he says, I think more so in, in season two. He said it once in the robot arm episode, but I think I think we're going to get more of that as an answer of just he knows a guy. And we're going to have to quest- question more and more his connections. It's a terrifying, like, revelation to realize how much, like, how many people Jake might know, and, like, the different sort of things that they're able to do for him. Just thinking hard on that (laughs) kind of fucks Um, me up. Jake, no, Adam is upset. (laughs) He's like, this is stupid, this is stupid, Jake. You, You brought me all the way over here, got me trapped in Saturday detention. And then, what was what was the reason he did this next bit where he just pulls his pants down? He, he, you know, you know, <sighs> it feels like there wasn't even a reason. But he's just like explaining that he I could have been in my home just uh, eating cereal, watching cartoons, and he takes off his pants and is like, yeah, "In my Captain, Captain Clowny's." I'm so uh-huh. happy. <laughs> I can't oh, God, imagine get paid again. Shout out to Thanks Captain for our Clowney. Sponsorship, sponsorship, Captain Clowney. Captain Clowney with with a lot of different options for for clowning around. <laughs> I was just so happy to see Captain Clowney mentioned again, and it's the underwear's funny. It's like got a big red nose on like the backside. Do you do you think every time Adam sits down, it makes like a very quiet <laughs> like? <laughs> Because I feel like that's the only, like, real reason to you would ever want to put a clown nose on the butt of underwear is for it to do something funny like that. It tells them they're live, so uh, everybody's looking at his underwear you know. right now. But we really don't, aside from a bit at the end, we don't see, like, a shot of, like, anybody else watching this show. <laughs> like, we don't, we don't. That's. That's what makes this episode so uncomfortable. It's th- we're we're in a secluded place that nobody else in like the school remembers. It's oh my god! 
I, oh Jake has God. entrapped Adam here in this like show stage that doesn't seem to have any other entrances besides that vent, and he's just there, like <laughs> forcing Adam to do stuff. And and we we never get a shot of like any reaction. We don't get like a shot of like Carrie or anything or anybody besides one person at the end. But it it feels so isolated. <laughs> and it's... as as this episode goes on, it feels more unhinged. It feels like if it, it feels it's... like the Eric Andre show. I was literally just about to say that you fucking took it from me. You kept talking. <laughs> I was so ready to say that Jake Spider Monkey has his own fucking Eric Andre show just in the depths of the school, and you just snatched it away. I'm so sorry, I'll make it up to you. I don't know how. But, yeah, so, I feel like explaining the episode as it goes on here is going to be counterproductive because it's kind of repetitive. So, I'm just going to... We're just going to describe the general vibe of what happens next. Um, Adam does not want to be there. Jake it pulls out a, a button that's like connected to a, a cracked, rusted speaker <laughs> that like plays really, really bad, like like laugh track, like an like an aww, uh, you know, booing and. Like, you know, all, all the, like, canned, like, reactions on, on a live studio audience. I don't, I don't think we can, like, like you said, explain what this episode, like, is, but we can interpret right. what it means. <laughs> so, there's, it's, it basically <laughs> escalates to where, like, Jake keeps pressing the button and, like, using it to, like, manipulate, like, Adam. He's like, oh, the audience didn't like that when Adam is like, you know, I'm going home and all this. It's like you said earlier where, like, Adam is not, like, angry. He's not, like, you know, challenging Jake. It's like, it's not like, you're you're being really stupid here, Jake. He's just like, you know, all right. You know, uh, I guess I'm lowering the ratings of your show here, Jake. I, you know, I'm, <laughs> like I'm about to head out. Yeah, he's just playing along. He's like, I'm, I'm gonna go back. Like, <laughs> he's he's very dry and sarcastic here, and and Jake's like not having it at all. He's just like keeps pressing the button. He he presses it at first, like you know, booing Adam is like, oh, the audience is booing you, Adam. Oh, that's not very sporting of you. But then he presses it again, and the audience like. Is laughing at one of the things he says, it's like, "Hey, hey, Adam, come on, come back!" Like they're laughing at you. They're, they 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 think you're funny. And I'm, this is terrible. So it it's kind of scary. It's almost like you know, it feels like a Twilight really Zone is, episode. He... A little bit. <laughs> where where as as we go on, Jake forces Adam to spin plates, and he does that for a while, and. Uh, rather than, you know, you thinking, like, Jake is just using, like, the canned laughter and stuff, like, for his advantage, he keeps pressing the button, and, like, the canned laughter keeps cheering for Adam as he's spinning these plates and stuff, and Jake just grows more jealous at this, like, what he knows is, like, just, like, canned laughter, but he believes it to be, like, Real. this, like... Like, like, like true. Like, press like, the button. Like, and there's only it, one button on this remote, by the way. He's pressing the button, and like, it's just like the audience is against him, even though he's controlling it. He presses the button after like, ev like after an action happens, and like feels angrier and more jealous as the audience turns on him. He he tries. He he comes in on a horse wearing an awful outfit. <laughs> he makes it cry. <laughs> He makes a horse cry, and I still don't know if that horse is sapient or not. It's, it's still a burning I mean, question in my mind. I don't know if any of this, like, anything here was real. I, I feel like he took him into, like, this, like, what's, what's the word? Like, limp, limp dick liminal, space? Liminal space? Liminal space? Like, this strange liminal space that's just, like, it's almost like that episode of Courage the Cowardly Dog, where they, like, go inside that guy's, like, oh, yeah. that guy's, like, body, but yeah, it's, like, yeah. a room. 
you know, and there's like a heart there. It's it's like that. Like maybe this is like the innards of Jake. This is like a physical manifestation of well, like it, his mind. It escalates even his further mind. Jake starts yeah. yelling, like I'm the star of this show. And when he says this show, and he kind of is like looking at us. Does he mean yes, my gym partner's so a monkey? He's looking at us and being like, I'm the star. Like maybe. He's like, people are liking Adam. People are relating with Adam more, but I want them to like me. I want them to be on my side. This is my show. This is my show. This is my it's show. This is my show. My gym partner's a human. <laughs> my gym partner's a human. I didn't even think about it like that, but it's, God, it's all there, isn't it? It's just, this, this is a gaze into Jake's mind where he... He is on the stage constantly. He's not, you know, he doesn't have any comfort to himself. He has to seek all this attention. He has to he has to get this attention. Otherwise, he's just miserable and just like this is the world is his stage. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. Oh god. And Adam Adam is the interloper, much like in the show, just like the outsider. That he has to try and corral and cage for for his for the sh sake of the show, but and when he ends up winning, when he ends up getting any modicum of like the uh, what he wants, the, it all falls apart for Jake. It's wrong. He, J Adam shouldn't be winning. His life should be miserable. Jake's the funny man. It's Jake's show. It's Jake. That and that is basic Jake. That is Jake God. in essence. Basic Shit. Jake is not just an episode. It is a character piece on Jake. It is... <laughs> this is... This is the whole point of the show! How I could guess. we not see this earlier? Why did we do that character piece already on him when it was all <laughs> right here? It was all here! We didn't even need to make an episode about it! By God! By God, Renee, Jake, his entire, his entire story, it was here, just an episode or two away, and we just missed it. It was too anyway. late. <laughs> so, yeah. Jake, Jake has become unhinged. Adam is like, trying, to trying to console him. Like, he's really uh, trying to, I'm trying to be a friend yeah. here. It, like, it's fine, you know, like, it's okay, Jake. I'm, I'm doing your show. You don't. I'm having I'm just, fun, Jake. I'm just like, trying. This is fun. But, but Jake, Jake's not having it. He's so like, well, charismatic, well, <laughs> lion. Let's let's see what the audience has to say. And he keeps pressing the button, but then it turns out the battery's dead. And he's like, oh well, the battery seems to be dead. That's all. Thanks for watching the show. And Bye, everybody. <laughs> Then that's it. The show ends, and we get a shot of Principal Pixie Frog watching the show cut out on on his own television screen, and is like, "Ah, oh, Basic Jake, one of my favorite shows. Ah, uh, those actors seem pretty oh, familiar, oh. though." Then he gives Miss Warthog a treat. Does it? Uh, which like, I mm -hmm. I hope that's not <laughs> yeah, her she, only she's payment. She's like giving him like a pedicure or something. I don't know how that works. He's a frog. <laughs> <laughs> well, a frog with no. toenails. Animal Facts Corner There is a species of frog, it is not the pixie frog, but there is a species of frog that uses the finger bones as uh, as makeshift claws. It breaks its own finger bones through the oh. skin of its fingers. Uh, oh, I've heard about that to use as a defense mechanism to claw at enemies or, or, or prey and you know maybe maybe principal pixie frog just does that but you know for a pedicure well, sort of, sort the of more thing you know get some pain you know. thank you, you renee for your animal <laughs> fat time uh corner adam is confused he's like he literally says all that build up and that's it this On seems a little <laughs> I after like yeah, after viewing this episode a second time, it seemed like a very uh 
Hey, Meta. sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry about time. this one. <laughs> like, I noticed... I noticed, like, some of, like, the character poses were a bit weird. Like, just, like... This, some, like, stuff seemed a bit off-model, and I wonder if this was just, like, an off-episode. Uh, they're just, like, you know, uh, you know, well, they did have that new background, Jake's thing, but it was mostly there and in the lunchroom and stuff, so maybe this was just an off-episode for them, but they wanted to twist it to have deeper meaning in, in a way that was so multi-layered that it's not immediately obvious. And it just seems like a weird episode. But it, it's it got meaning there. It has, it has something Adam more meta in Jake mind. Adam fun to it's quote, despite you almost killing me. <laughs> so. Despite you almost killing me with plates, uh, making us a horse sad, and uh, going criminally yeah, so insane. In the lunchroom, Principal Pixie Frog comes in. Uh, the dingoes say one more stupid thing, to which everyone's like, "What?" Uh, what? <laughs> to which prin uh, <laughs> Principal Pixie Frog's just like, "Please just go." <laughs> yeah, that, that was a good ending to that running gag. But uh, Jake drags Adam by his tail again, and like the tail recedes into his body. You can hear like the like the whining of like a cord receding back into its like thing. Do you think there's like a like? Do you think where do you think it's stored? Anyway, so then <laughs> Adam is so excited to have another Saturday <laughs> detention, and the uh, Prince Pixie Frog's like, "Did you learn your lesson, boys?" And then Adam's like, "Sure did." And then Chum buckets him again because <laughs> he's a fucking idiot. Well, all right, Adam Lion, time. I guess you're gonna have you, detention again. He says something worse. Thanks. And and it he he ends up ends the episode with Principal Pixie Frog is like why 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 would he willingly go to detention? You know, isn't going. I thought like going up on a tree, uh, being uh, hounded by dingoes. I thought that was scary. Unless <gasps> he was put up to it, <laughs> mother. And he hides in his bucket. <laughs> Better keep this bucket. And Better stay it. here. That's that's the end of the episode. And I feel like we've said all that <sighs> needs to be said about that one. So Yeah. I, I like it's it's so odd. You know, you I I really do wonder. We got we got to pull back the veil a bit. We you know, we 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 say we attribute a lot of stuff that's deeper to the episodes than you know than anyone would reasonably think they actually are that you know we it's faux deep a lot of what we say but this episode gives a lot of credit it's just <laughs> it's not a conventional like cartoon episode <laughs> it, it doesn't have like the usual like tropes and stuff i mean it has some things here and there like that you know to keep it going along but it's not a satisfying arc it's not like an arc of any meaning it it, does, it's, it just kind of happens it doesn't serve Stuff as a just cartoon episode happen. it, but it does serve our purposes and that's what makes it interesting so i I, this... I i don't know you know if you're watching this as a casual fan just like you know watching with your kids maybe it's all right to skip these two episodes especially the, the earlier one but I hope you know, you're maybe not this watching. One. I hope you're not watching the show or listening to this show yeah, don't expose your kids, your kids to this kids. <laughs> but but if you're a true art connoisseur, if you if you know you're a fan of David Lynch, you like you know deeper meanings to stuff. You know, I think basic jokes is right for you. Yeah, uh, if you're really into like the avant-garde stuff, like Jacob, real Jacob's Ladder kind of feeling, then you should definitely give J Basic Jake uh, anyway, a that try. Was our episodes. Um, let's read some comments. Yeah, Please give me do. give me give me a right, comment. Um, I haven't read it in a you while. Can read the first one because it's relevant to your head canon. That's basically <laughs> not just appeared in three episodes. Sleepy Nook says, "Mr. Blowhole Career Test said he was going to ASMR YouTuber, and to this day he never understands what it meant to this day." It's 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 almost prophetic. It's almost pathetic, you know. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Come on. Mr. Bull took a career aptitude test and it said YouTube ASMR and he was like, what the <laughs> fuck is that? He just was... didn't know because the internet didn't exist at that point. Well, it did. And also, I mean, he's a whale. <laughs> Thank you for the comment. Uh, okay. Thanks. Megal Obsterface writes, I think Lanky Kong is Jake's dad. If not, he you know should what? be. <laughs> well, we, we do know. Uh, could be, could be a Jake's stepdad, dad, but yeah. adoptive parents. Could be you know, a stepdad. I think this person's I... onto something. I think Lanky Kong is Jake's dad. Or maybe because like... you know, I don't. You know, despite what what I've said before, you know, I don't think Jake is really a a, wow. a spider monkey. I'm 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 you know Lanky Kong definitely sh shares a lot of attributes <laughs> with Jake, especially that lankiness quality. <laughs> Jake gets a knock on his door at the zoo. You, you're coming back home with me. Uh, who are you? I'm, I'm your destiny. It's me, Cranky Kong, and you're a Kong. <laughs> you're Jake Kong. <laughs> you're, you're, you're my long lost what? What is Lanky Kong in relation Hold on, let to me look up the Donkey Cranky Kong? Kong. I, th Donkey I, th <laughs> I think he's just like an adopted member of the clan. Like there was like I think the lore is that there's like this species of uh like orangutans, this clan of orangutans called the Mankey, and Lanky was one of them. But he he got adopted into the Kong clan. In one way or another, because the Kong clan isn't just like it's not just like a family. Right, it's, it's a like, clan. You know, Candy it's Kong, she's it's not a whole to like... Donkey Kong, but they're like involved. Um, yeah, I... sexual, so, right? I I think Jake is a missing member of the Kong clan, and you know maybe might answer some questions. Uh... Come with me, boy. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to Congo hey, Bongo. Yo. You <laughs> have to meet your father. Your real father. There we go. Banana slammer. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to read this this last comment, and there's a little history behind it. Specter Quilava yeah, like says, I'm all caught up. And this person has commented on all of our hey, videos so far, that's... and we've watched them journey through <laughs> the episodes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Specter Quillava. It's, it's so it's so nice that you know, some someone's taken the time to like listen through our podcast episodes to to really catch up. Uh, we we got quite a, an assembly right now. Uh, Fifteen episodes now, counting this one. I haven't even listened to like all of our episodes, <laughs> so that's them, really like. Good. Yeah, I have been part of Renee. them. That is true. But... Yeah, this, nah, is... this is 16, Oof. right? 16, wow. here we go. Well, <laughs> it's almost like we're going to make a real <laughs> podcast or something. So thank you, everyone. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> maybe, <Yes. some> <laughs> maybe someday I'll... Maybe someday I'll actually get a fucking microphone that works for this. Hey, y'all. It's because you're in the fishbowl. It's okay. Thank, thank you so much. It is because I'm in the fishbowl, but someday I'm going to come out and y'all are going to hear me. You're going to hear <laughs> so music. So thank you everybody for coming out and enjoying the show. <laughs> gonna... Next week we're going to be listen watching The Times They Are Exchanging and Cool Kids. <laughs> I cannot wait to see who the cool kids are. <laughs> Times I, I are exchanged. Cool oh my and... fucking god, the cool kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, I, th I think you'll remember them. And they're 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 pretty cool. They're pretty cool. <laughs> uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah, uh, I'm Lucy. I am Gert, and I'm Renee. And this has been my gym partners a podcast. Don't turn that dial. Uh, otherwise, <laughs> in 1992, there was a strange show that appeared. <laughs> <laughs>